Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. I've got Ginger Cat joining me today for this one. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to choose stitches for your embroidery projects. So I'm going to talk to you about choosing stitches specifically um, and not techniques. So not um, how do I know when to use black work and how do I know when to use crawl work. So we're just going to look at stitches. So just presume we've got an outline design. You think that's really nice. How do I choose some stitches to fit into that? It's a question we get asked a lot on YouTube as I go, well, what stitch do I use for this and what stitch do I use for that? And there's no right or wrong answer. So I want to show you a technique that I use. Um, and I do emphasize, emphasize that this is the way I do it. There are other ways as well. Some people can just look at something, oh yeah, I'll put that stitch in there and that stitch in there. But I've got quite a good method if you're really stuck and you think, I don't know how to choose stitches and um, I hope this works for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on some paper and I've got some pens here as well that I'm going to use. So don't panic if you think, oh no, she's drawing. <laughs> I can't do drawing. Um, this is really, really easy. If you can sign your name, you can do this. And I just think this really helps to see instantly what something might look like rather than getting loads of threads out and trying stuff and thinking, oh no, that doesn't work. I want to, I'll have to try something different. I just find doing it this way um, gives a really good instant view of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to show you um, my method. So I've got a set of drawings here and I will put these in a free PDF for you on the website so you can see um, a link to that in the description below this video. And this is a design that I took from my sketchbook, um, got lots of designs in there waiting for a day to be used so this is a good day to pull this one out. Just a little pomegranate design and I thought this would be a really good one to show you on because it's got lots of different shapes and different elements going on and we can choose some stitches for this. So my first part of the procedure is to shade in some of the areas. So with a design like this I would leave some areas open and with no stitching in for the fabric to show through because I think that's a nice balance. You could fill the whole entire thing in if you wanted to and that would look lovely. It is harder to stitch doing that because you've got to fit your stitches together and you've got to be clever with your colours as well because your colours got to balance when they're next to other colours. So I personally like to have a little bit of a balance of an open and closed spaces so I'll show you that what that looks like. So I've just got a pen, um, just got a normal drawing pen here but you can use anything to be honest for this because we're going to be really sketchy with this. I've got quite a large nib because what I want to do is just shade in colour in some of these shapes. So I'm going to colour in what I think will be stitched and some parts of this are obvious to me. So I think the little pomegranate seeds need stitching. I would fill those in. So I'm just going to literally can see how I'm just scribbling to fill that shape in just so I can see what that's going to look like. So I'd leave the gap around it so that will be the fabric showing through this will be a stitch so we've also got this little lip around there and I think that would look quite nice solid as well and again remember no right or wrong to this this is just how I'm looking at it and I'll do a couple of versions so you can see a different way of doing it then we've got this little tendril up here now this is a line so we'll talk about this later but there's got a big shape on the end of it and I think when you've got a big shape it's quite good to fill that in like that. So I'm just going to fill that in. These circles also I think are asking to be stitched as well and this shape on the outside of this leaf here. And you can see I'm not being really careful with this. This is just to give me an idea of where the stitches will be. Now we've got these little shapes here so we could either fill those in or we could fill in around them. So let's just try filling them in and seeing what that looks like to start off with. And we could do the same over here. So we've got a shape inside the leaf. So we could either fill that shape in or that shape. Let's just try leaving the middle blank. And filling in around it. Like so. So that gives me one. I'm going to stop there actually. That gives me one idea about where the stitches are going and where they're not. So anything that's a line could just be a line of stitching and the rest is going to be solid. If you can hear birds outside, <laughs> it's a beautiful sunny day here. We've got the door open because it's quite warm, but it's actually very pleasant listening to the birds and ginger cat's too hot to go chasing them, which is lucky for the birds. <laughs> it's way too hot to do that, isn't it, ginger cat? So that's one way that we could tackle it. So let's have a look at another one. 
So let's try doing some different areas now. So we filled in the outside of the leaf. Let's just try the middle. What would it look like if we filled that with a stitch? And this could just be an outline here. We could um, leave that as well. We could just sort of fill in maybe the outside and leave the middle blank there. Let's fill in this part now and not those little shapes and see what that looks like. This is quite open, leaving it like this. So let's make that solid and see if that looks better. You can see this is not a work of art, it doesn't need to be a work of art. This is a working drawing. And again, we'll just fill that in because I think that's quite nice. Opposite. And then look at the pomegranate. We filled in the middle bit. So how about if we left this part here open and filled in around it? Make this edge nice and solid. That could look really good. And leave those open and again I'll just fill in the seeds. I think they're really asking to be filled in. I think definitely know that I'm going to stitch those. That's quite nice because that's got a dark area in the middle, then an open area with some fabric coming through and then a stitched area around the edge. So that's got quite a nice balance to it. So we'll just try one more and then we'll choose one of them. So what I'm going to do with this one is a little bit of a mix of the two. I've gone either I'm going to fill that shape in or not. But what happens if you sort of filled half the shape in and just get a little bit of interest in there, um, which we can do with our stitches. So again, we'll fill the seeds in. Happy about that decision. And I am going to fill this in as well around here. I think that makes quite a nice edge. And if I'm careful with the colours that I choose, I can really make that stand out. Give that some really nice dimension. So I've kind of got half a mind to colours and things as well. But don't worry too much about colours at the moment. Just get where the stitches are going to be. And let's fill that in. Quite happy with this leaf here. So I think we'll stick with that. I think this one's a bit too open. I like the balance of this one. So I'm going to stick with that one. And we're going to stitch around these shapes which will be a little bit trickier, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to fill this shape in as well. I think that's a nice balance. It's in that space on its own, so that's quite nice to have a solid bit there and this centre bit here, because I like that on this one. But I still think these are a little bit open still. They need something more. So rather than leaving it empty or filling it in, what about if we just filled half of it in? So if I just sort of mark around the edge of that. I don't know what's going in there yet. But I'm not worrying about that at this stage. Just going, yep, yeah, something around the edge just gives that nice solid edge to that shape and I'm going to do the same with the leaves actually. I don't want to fill that leaf in but I think it would be nice with just something a little bit more solid around the edge. I think that's a really nice balance of the three. I've got six on this sheet. I could just keep going with different variations and I can print off another sheet if I wanted to if I wasn't happy. Um, so don't have to do hundreds, there will be more than one solution to this. But if you get one you like, think, great, that's brilliant. Let's go with that. So I'm going to do this one. I like this balance here. So let's have a look at how we fit some stitches into that shaded diagram. So I've got a new sheet of designs here because now I want to look at some stitches and I'm going to draw my stitches in as well. Don't panic about that, that's coming in a second. But what I've just done with the first one is copied that shaded diagram onto here. So I've got this for reference and I can use this now and look at this and think what stitch can I put in there? I know where my stitches are going to be, it's going to help me choose them. But what we're going to do first is a little quick practice of how to draw some stitches and they're dead easy and it might change the way that you design your embroidery. So do stick around, don't run away. <laughs> This is very easy to do um, and it helps us give a visual reference as to what we're going to stitch later. So I'm going to pick a slightly 
narrow a pen for this and just show you how to draw these stitches they're super easy and they're really quick as well and if you can draw them you can apply them to your diagram you can see what your stitching is going to look like so let's start with a really easy one let's start with a running stitch so a line a space a line a space super super easy doesn't take long at all to do that so a back stitch is the same without the space in it and just leave a tiny little space just to show that they're separate stitches so that would represent a back stitch we could do variations of that so we could do a woven back stitch i can put my back stitch in and if we're weaving we're coming in and out of the stitches weaving in and out and that's what it would look like we could do a whipped back stitch So whipped comes around the same side each time. So it would be around there. Just very simple representations of the stitch. Um, stem stitch. So stem stitches are like little S's. It looks a little bit like a rope. Outline stitch would be the other way around. little s shapes just um to represent that doesn't matter between the difference between stem stitch and outline stitch there is a very subtle difference one's one way one's the other but if you just draw little s shapes that will represent that stitch easily chain stitch is super easy just lots of circles joined up that buttonhole and blanket stitch same sort of stitch it's just the distance that makes a difference so buttonhole stitch are very close i'm just doing little u shapes for that If you wanted to do a blanket stitch, they would be wider apart. Not exactly what the stitch looks like, but it's enough to represent it and go, oh, right, that's a blanket stitch. I can see that. Nice and easy one. French knots. A complex stitch, but you can draw them really easy. A little circle with a squiggle in the middle. So I'm just going to go around a little curly one like that. And they make really good instant French knots. You can do little groups of them like that. Satin stitch, so let's just draw ourselves a shape. I'm going to do straight lines all the way across it. Now this could also represent laid work as well, but just straight stitches. That just shows you filled that area in. Eyelets, another nice easy one, just go round in a circle. You can put as many in as you like, like that. Coral stitch is a good outline stitch we'll talk about in a minute, so straight line basically with knots down it. So just draw yourself a straight line, little circles, little dots. Those will be the knots of the coral stitch and that's what coral stitch looks like. And then one last one I'm going to do because it's um, another filling stitch is roads. Now it looks a little bit like eyelets when we draw it but it's very different on the fabric because it gives a nice right raised effect and all it is is a spiral of stitches going straight across the shape. So you can see it looks similar to eyelets fill that in a bit more because it's quite a solid stitch. So that's just a few ways that you can draw some stitches and I just think they're really super simple and we now apply those to our diagrams and we can see what our stitching is going to look like without having to pick any thread up at all. If you want to know how to do other stitches just grab a stitch dictionary or a stitch bible or whatever you use for your stitch references there'll be good images in there and you can just look at how the stitch is constructed just work out how you can represent that and you've got a massive repertoire of stitches that you can use. So now I've had a little practice at drawing the stitches and I know where my stitches are going, I can think about what stitch am I going to put in what place. So let's start with different kinds of stitches. So I'm going to look first at outline stitches. So we've got this tendril coming up here, around here. So we know that's only going to be a single line stitch. Now the good thing about um, lines is there's not that many stitches that you can actually choose from for this so this um, happens a lot with lettering I get a lot of people doing lettering well, I don't know what letter to stitch to use for my letter if it's just a single line you don't have that many choices so you've got back stitch and running stitch and the variations of whipped and woven chain stitch you can use um, coral stitch with the knots around it stem and outline stitch and those really are the main ones might be another couple of ones but they start to get 
um, a bit wider and they fill out a little bit. So really, you've only got those stitches to choose from. So that makes it much easier because <laughs> you haven't got many to choose from. So for this tendril here, for example, so I could do a stem stitch. I know how to draw that because it's my little S's. And by actually drawing it in, I can see what this is going to start to look like. You can see how quickly I'm doing it. It's not a work of art. And it just thickens out. Oh, that's a stem stitch. I could do a coral stitch. All I've got to do is put the dots on it. And you're making this drawing of what your embroidery is going to look like. Like so. Do one more. We could do a chain stitch. So there's a couple of line stitches and you can see how I've drawn them on, done them each on a different design and I can start to build that design and see what it's going to look like. Now some parts of your design you might know right from the beginning what you want to do and it seems really obvious. So I've been colouring these seed heads in um, in every one that I've done so I know that they're going to be solid. So it's the same as for line stitches, there are certain stitches that are good for filling in shapes. So French knots is a good one for example, so if I wanted to do French knots in here I could. So I can just draw little, little round squiggles to represent my French knots. That would be nice and solid piece of stitching there. So that would look really nice. It's a good idea to know your stitches um, when you choose them. Obviously, the more stitches you know, the more choice you've got. But there are some stalwart stitches that come in again and again that are really useful. So French knots is one of them. So worth learning. Do have a good video on that, by the way. If you want to know how to do your French knots, want a reminder, that can be one of those stitches that can be a bit tricky so you could do some French knots in there. Another thing that would look really nice in here, these are round seeds, would be some satin stitch so we could just do lines straight across. We could do them at different angles. So you can see I'm just taking a little bit more care now because this is starting to show me what my design is going to look like when I've stitched it. So it looks quite different to the French knots. The French knots are going to give me texture, the satin stitch are going to give me nice smooth shapes. So you can start to think about what kind of texture you might want as well. We've still got no confusion of colour yet, we're just going to do this one stage at a time. So let's have a look at this part here on this leaf now. So I've got that as solid as well. So I could again do a satin stitch. Now if I put the satin stitch on this one, because we've already got satin stitch here, so it's quite a lot of satin stitch. So let's split that up a bit and do the satin stitch here. Satin stitch is nice at an angle, so I'm just doing my lines at an angle. I'm going to fill that in like that. You could do the same over here. It's nice to bring some similar stitches in so it doesn't look like a big sampler of lots of different things. If you can balance it a little bit by repeating stitches, you could do a satin stitch over there. We could repeat the French knots as well and do those over here. We could do satin stitch in these little shapes too. And then because I filled in around here, I want this to be solid now, we could do satin stitch in both of these and we could go the other way. Just sort of thinking through some ideas in my head. I left those as empty, but they would look quite nice. Solid, like so. So what else have we got? We've got this is filled in as well around the seed heads. So we could do some rows of something for this. So we could do a row of stem stitch. So if I just draw some straight lines, I don't need to draw every little S for this. I just want to know that there's rows of stitching to fill that in. Like so around there. This is solid as well, this little tendril up here. So what else could we do for this? We could do um, a little eyelet in here. Eyelets just go into the middle, the stitches from the outside, they go down into the middle. That would look quite nice. So I'm just thinking of those stitches that I drew early and how can I fit those into these different shapes that I've got. Um, what else have we got here? So we've got another filling area here. So I could put in here um, a buttonhole stitch. So the one that's close together, blanket stitches wide apart. So we could just do those little U shapes here and fill that in like so. So there's lots of combinations and they're 
endless once you get going. So remember, no right or wrong, it doesn't matter which one you choose, just choose what you like together. Um, let's have a look at around the edge of the pomegranate. So we've got some stitches around the edge now. So we could do um, a few things here. We could literally do some rows of stitching. We could do some chain stitch. You notice I haven't drawn the actual stitches in, but I've just drawn the rows in. You could draw circles if you wanted to do chain, if you knew you wanted to do chain and see what that looks like. I could do something that's a little bit more open. So I could do something like um, a buttonhole stitch. So we've done, no, buttonhole we've done. Let's do the blanket stitch, which is a bit, a bit more open. So we've got a solid edge to it, but it sort of fades away. So I'm just going to do those little U shapes a bit wider apart now, change the length of them. And that gives me a really interesting edge actually. It gives me a solid edge along here, but then just a little bit more open. And if I turned it around as I went around the shape, that adds a bit more interest. And you can see how these designs are starting to build up now and you can see what a little bit what they're going to look like if you work them in those stitches. So we've got one more thing um, around the leaf. I've got a little bit of a shade around the leaf as well. So we could do some long and short stitch for that, for example. Now we haven't looked at long and short stitch in our drawings, but they're just straight stitches, <laughs> literally. So they're like satin stitch, but not the same length. So if I just draw straight stitches and make them slightly different length, turn them with the leaf and it could just be one row of long and short stitch. That leaf disappears behind that leaf so do make sure you look at your design and make sure that it makes sense. I don't want to come all the way around here with my stitches because my leaf's actually behind the pomegranate so just make sure that that does make sense um, and then just let's finish this one off so we've got a couple of designs here so we've done a long and short around that one we could just take some rows of stitching around this one so we could do some stem stitch around here gives a nice wiggly edge there we could fill this in with some um, straight stitches as well I'm not going to draw the separate stitches, but if I just draw rows, that will represent that. Got these ones that are empty, so again, satin stitch in there. Could do an eyelet. Eyelets well, make great circles. So you can see how I'm building up my designs. And again, you could keep going and keep going with lots of variations. There's infinite number of variations. So I'm going to pick a few elements from these um, ones that I've done here. I like this buttonhole edge around it here. Um, I like the satin stitch seed heads because I think they would be nice and round and shiny. So I'm going to do those seed heads. I'm going to do that edge on there. Um, I'm going to do the rows, I think, for this leaf here. And I'm going to fill in the background here as well um, with some satin stitch. So I'm going to put those different elements that I like, the ones that I've chosen, and I'll put those in, in the finished design and we'll have a look at that. If you want some more information and ideas on how to choose stitches for different shapes, then do check out our bunch of fives playlist. We've got loads in there on how to choose stitches for circles, for lines, for um, making leaves with, um, for filling in solid shapes and open shapes. We've got lots of information in there. Do check that out. I'll put that up at the end of this video um, and that should help you a lot. So this is my finished design that I've come up with, uh, just one of many. You, again, you could have hundreds of these. This is the one I've chosen. I quite like the balance of this. I'll just walk you through it quickly. <clears throat> so the pomegranate here, I've gone for the um, blanket stitch around the edge. So slightly open, I'm going to turn it around there. So I've got the solid edge and a little bit of open area as well. I'm going to do satin stitch in the middle here for the seeds. I think they represent the roundness and smoothness of the seeds quite nicely. And I'm also going to do it around the edge here, but I'm going to make those look different with the direction I do my stitches and my colours as well which we'll talk about in a second and let's go around the leaf so just a couple of rows of edging stitches around here I haven't selected the stitches yet but probably do some stem stitch I think around there 
I've got my French knots in the middle here, nice solid area French knots. And I know I can shade these as well. So when you're doing these stitches, start thinking about, can I put some different colours in these? Could I do from dark to light? That'll give you extra dimension. You can just start thinking about that at this stage. The tendril, I've done the coral stitch. I like those little knots in it going up there. So coral stitch up around the tendril, coming out into some satin stitch here for the end. And then if we look at this big leaf over here, I've got more satin stitch in here. I think that just works nicely for this smooth shape. So I'm going to satin stitch around these shapes here and try and leave these ones open. And also the um, circles in here, which kind of represent the seeds in the pomegranate. It's going to tie the two different elements of the design together. So using repeat stitches can really help you to do that. And then just to finish off in this part of the leaf here, I'm going to do some rows of um, single line stitches in here and build that solid shape up with the single lines so you can put stitches together and rows of stitches together to fill in solid shapes if you want to so um, that's my design let's look at it when it's been stitched now just before I show you the stitched one, I've actually stitched that design. Um, I just want to talk about practicing your stitches. So it all looks good on paper and you think, oh yeah, I've got a really good idea of what I want. But it's still worth doing some sampling and just checking those stitches out. You might not be sure how many threads you want to use for a stitch. You might want to just double check some colours next to each other. Um, if you've got a different kind of fabric you want to use, a bit more unusual fabric, it's definitely worth practicing on the fabric that you want to use first, just in case that changes the way the stitch behaves. So I um, just want to show you my sampler. We've got a whole video on sampling. If you haven't seen that, you can check that out up here. Really, really useful. Everybody should be doing it. Um, it's going to save you um, time. It's going to save you on picking threads. It's going to save you on having to buy extra threads because you've wasted them. Um, and it's just about practicing your stitches before you commit to doing them on your actual piece. You don't need to do much. It doesn't need to look beautiful, um, but it's a really good working method just to try things out, try out some colour combinations, make sure you're happy with the way that they work, and then you can go and stitch it on your final piece. So this is the piece stitched and what I wanted to do really was show you that next to my drawing. We'll talk about that in a second. So if I just pull that down here and put it next to it and you can see how similar they are. You can see that drawing these stitches out gave me a really good representation of how it was going to look on the fabric. We've got the addition of the colour, yes, and that does make a difference because you can bring areas out and push areas back depending on what colours you use. But I just wanted to show you how this line drawing translates because it's a really good method to use. It's very quick um, and you don't waste any materials doing it. So I just wanted to show you that. So let's just have a look at the finished one there. One um, combination of many different combinations and I chose my colours as well. Here is my colours. So I tried to pick them that were sort of pomegranate colours, so reds and oranges. They've got quite an orangey skin to them, pomegranates, and a couple of greens for the leaves as well. If you want to know about how to choose colours, we have another video all about that. It's quite a complex sub subject. If you haven't seen that, you can check that out up here when you finish what watching this one to help you because now you want to choose your colours along with your stitches you're doing another level of the process and you've got to put those two processes together so do go and check that out if you're not sure about colour those were the ones I picked to stitch this and I think that's come out really nicely um, so don't forget there is a pdf on that if you want to have a go at stitching this yourself and for our youtube channel members and our patrons as well I'm going to do another version of this. Um, I'm going to change the stitches completely just to show you how different another design can look. So we'll make that into a video that is coming soon. I promise it won't be, won't be today, but it is coming soon. So keep your eye out for that. And if you're interested in that video and you're not a patron or a channel member, you can check out details in the description below this video of how you can join. So I just want to show you all of that process in action with another piece um, that I have made just to show you that it's a good system and it works. It works for me anyway. It might not work for you, but hopefully you'll find some of this useful. So I just want to show you that on this mandala design. I mentioned this in my previous video. Um, the design for this is on my free stuff page as well. If you want to have a go at this mandala and uh, patrons and channel members have also got the video of how I made this as well. Um, but I wanted to show you this because I've done that process I've just explained in this. So here is my outline drawing, which I did first. Um, and then 
rather than just do it in black pen to work out what was going to be filled and I actually did it in colour which you can do if you want to you could do a black and white one first and then a colour one if you want to break those stages down a bit further so there's my colour one which shows me where my stitches are going to go the areas that are going to stay open and the areas that I'm going to fill in I did a couple of those ones there's another one here where I didn't fill in this area solidly I did a sort of row around the edge and a row around the middle so you can already see how those stitches um, could apply to these designs um, and I changed um, some of the details as well this has got more details in it as well so you could say a simple one and a more complicated one as well if you wanted to do that so those are where my stitches are going and then here is my stitch diagram so here I've drawn the stitches in on this one so I can quite clearly see now what the stitches actually are so in these um, drawings here I know that area is green that's going to be leaf and then I know here that I'm going to do a fly stitch which is just basically lined down the middle with lots of V's if you want to draw a fly stitch um, and I've done that in the leaves I've got eyelets in these circles here I've got a chain stitch that I've drawn around here this is just a satin stitch I've got a buttonhole around the middle as well so you can see clearly from this how I've taken those stitch diagrams and made up what my piece is going to look like and here's the finished one just to prove that the system works and you can see the similarities between them you can see how this representation is quite good with my finished stitching thing it gives you a really good example of what your finished piece is going to look like so I hope you found that helpful everybody and it's given you some ideas about how to do the process from start to finish if you're really stuck. Um, I find this works really well for me. I'm still using this um, years and years after first learning to stitch. It works really well for me. So do give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. More people will get to see it and learn from it. Don't forget to check out all our other videos. I've got loads more on this process and the design process and colour. So do check those out. Um, and Ginger Cat and I will see you next time.